Thank you so much. It's great to be here at TEDx Kalamazoo. Um, I, I'm really, really happy to be here. I have to say it's a pleasure. It's an honor to be here. But to be honest with you, I wasn't, I wasn't so happy um, three weeks ago. I, I got the call from, from the TED people about three weeks ago, and they said, um, congratulations. You've been accepted to be a, a TED speaker in Kalamazoo. And, uh, they started to go over the details with me and started to review some of the, the fine points. And they said it's November 8th in Kalamazoo, and uh, it's at the Kalamazoo Institute of Arts, and it's at 4 o'clock, and you'll be there. And I said, well, well, wait a minute. You mean I have to show up live? And they said, yeah, that's part of the TED tradition. It's live talks. And I said, but can I just, you know, can I YouTube this? You know, I'm, I'm totally, I'm, I'm in the cloud, you know, I'm... I'm, I'm connected to the, to the whole cloud thing, and can we just maybe Google Skype this or something? And they said, no, that's part of the TED tradition. You know, it's live people. And I said, I, I just don't think that's fair. You know, I'm really busy. Did you, did you read the title to my TED talk? I'm, I'm planning a revolution here, you know? Like, that's the title. It's part of a revolution. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like Che Guevara and, and Mahatma Gandhi on two wheels, you know? This is, I'm, I'm fixing bikes and I'm saving kids. I'm very busy. And they said, yeah, you have to be there. And so I lost that one. Um, and that's OK, because uh, that's fine. I'm, I'm glad to be here. I've met some wonderful people. So I'm really, honestly, glad to be here. So all that talk about technology and, and the cloud um, and all that stuff got me thinking about the work that I do and, and the kids that I work with and how connected those kids are, how plugged in those kids are to technology. This is a, a picture of my four-year-old son, Otis. And um, he's got there in his lap his little iPod. That's, um, it might as well be called my first iPod. He, He's got the little click wheel, and it, he totally knows how to use that thing, and he listens to it every night before he goes to bed, and he's, he's totally connected. He's, he's kind of merged with that technology now, and uh, it just got me thinking about how connected kids are. And it's concerning to me because I realized that because kids are so te technology connected, because they're so plugged in, they're in front of a screen a great majority of their day. The average 8 to 18-year-old is in front of a screen about six and a half hours a day. And that's about um, the way I see it, about a third of their waking hours. And that's concerning to me. It worries me that kids are so plugged in. Um, and to be honest, that level of connectedness is not really the life that I want for my kids. It's not the life that I want for any of our kids to be so connected to a device or a screen or so plugged in. Um, it's not what I want for our future. And I think, I think about tools like Facebook. You know, Facebook is fine, but when kids are searching for answers, I wonder, I wonder if that's going to be a tool that really connects them to meaningful relationships. Is that going to be, when kids are running home from school and checking Facebook to see who they can connect with, is that going to give them meaningful relationships? And a tool like Google. I, you know, I'm not a Google hater. I use Google. I search things with Google. But I wonder, when kids are looking for answers, because these kids growing up have been raised in Google. You know, they are always searching for answers. And when they're searching for answers, can they really find significant answers to the real questions they have using Google. I don't know if they can. And all of that keeps me up at night because I think about if kids are able to do things like ride their bikes around the block independently or run down the street or explore in the woods and just, you know, like when I say something like explore in the woods, it kind of it gets a lot of people nervous because kids don't do that as much because we're afraid of that. Are they really going to be connected to nature? And are they going to be able to use their hands? I think we're losing the ability to use our hands and solve problems. Are they going to be able to take things apart and put them back together again? I know all of us probably did that, had the privilege to take something apart and see how it worked and put it back together. And because kids are so connected, because they're so plugged in, there's a price we're paying. 
I learned that one out of every three kids is overweight or obese. And that worries me. Kids' bodies are changing because of the lives that they're leading. That's a pretty significant number. And it's not only affecting their bodies, but it's affecting their brains. You know, um, when, when we get out and we bike around the block or we run down the street or whatever we do, there's a little part of our brains called the hippocampus. It's that purple thing up there, if you can see it. It's the purple thing down at the bottom. And when we do all that activity, that little hippocampus gets all fired up. Deep down in that squishy brain of ours, that thing gets all active. And you know what that does? That does three things. It helps us with memory. It helps us with organization and it helps us with self-control. And you can imagine the kids who are active and who are sparking up their hippocampus start to have better outcomes in school. Their academic achievement improves. And that's pretty powerful. So when I think about all those concerns I th and I think about that revolution that I talked about, it makes me think about transforming, transforming our communities. So you look at that picture and you wonder what that picture is. Well, you probably don't wonder, it's a bridge, and you can probably see that quite clearly. But that bridge is in Madison, Wisconsin, and that bridge has been designed not for cars, but for pedestrians and bicycles. So that bridge was solely designed so that people could go over a highway and not have to risk their lives in getting smushed by a car. And I think that's pretty fantastic, and what's even better is there are four of them in Madison for pedestrians and bicycles alone. And so in transforming, I wonder if we start to transform our communities to give kids an opportunity to use their hands and to work together to solve problems with their hands. And not only that, but to work with adults to teach them how to solve those problems, to teach them what it looks like to work in a group to solve those problems. And we are able to do that if we give kids the opportunity to solve those problems and to be active. That's what that transformation is about. And so all of these concerns, all of these things led me to start an organization five years, called, five years ago called Open Roads. And Open Roads has become a nonprofit organization that teaches kids social skills and bike mechanic skills in order to better prepare them for their future. That's what it does. So we do all this with five core values, right? So in teaching those people skills, those soft skills, we teach things like respect, own your actions, attitude, discipline, and safety. All of those values weave into all of the programs that we do, right? So I'll explain a little bit about what we offer by telling you about three core programs in our organization. The first one is called an earn a bike program. Right, so an earn a bike program is one in which kids all come together for eight weeks. They go through a program either at a summer camp or an after school program or something like that. And they're guided through a set of skills. And each week they learn a new skill. They learn a mechanic skill and a social skill. So they might learn how to fix a flat tire and how to listen and follow directions. Or how to um, tune up their brakes and how to introduce themselves. So each week they learn a new skill and throughout that process, they build on those skills. And at the end, if they're successful, if they complete that program, then they get to earn the bicycle that they've been working on all along. And that makes kids really proud, right? So the second program we offer is called Fix a Palooza. That's a little bit less formal. That's a, a program that is um, held in neighborhoods. It's usually outside. And we have kids come together um, kids and volunteers and adults and kids come together and learn how to fix their bicycle, do the repairs that need being done in order to make their bicycle safe and rideable. So they can come with their broken bike and with their dad or their mom or their uncle or their little brother, anyone they want, and they learn how to do that together with the adult volunteers. And there's kind of a, a little community feel there. People come together and we all learn how to solve those problems together and kids get dirty and we fix things and sometimes we break things and that's part of the deal because we learn how to do that together. And at the end, we all break bread together, we have pizza, right? We eat together and we talk about what we learned and what it was like and who helped us learn the things that we learned. So it's really a fantastic program. 
The third program is an apprenticeship program. And I get really excited when I talk about this one because this is the program that translates those skills that they've been learning into real world experiences. So we take kids who've been going through our programs, our Earn a Bike or our Fix a Palooza, and we bring them into a professional shop, right? So if you successfully complete one of those programs and you show capacity, then you get the experience to work in a professional bike shop with real mechanics, real tools, real bikes, and real customers. And they get to translate all of those skills into those real work situations. So anytime we've been doing this work for quite some time and we've been doing programs and programs and working with lots of kids, we always ask ourselves why. Why are we doing this? What does it mean? What are the outcomes that we're going for? And it really boils down to three things. The first one is job skills, right? A lot of kids that I see on a regular basis don't have the opportunity to get those early vocational skills that maybe a lot of us had by going to a workplace with an uncle or a dad or an aunt or a mom or someone like that. So these kids don't have the opportunity. And this program teaches them those early vocational skills. The second thing is people skills. Those skills are essential for their survival, right? If you're going to be in a workplace or any kind of professional setting, you need to know how to introduce yourself, how to listen to someone, how to follow directions, how to show respect to someone you may not like, right? So those skills are essential, those people skills. The third thing is healthy lifestyles. We know when we see kids um, who are coming up in the age of technology that they need healthy lifestyles in order to be kids who are active and healthy and vibrant. So we teach them the value of a bicycle and learning to ride your own bicycle as a means of getting involved in your, trans in your community and having your own transportation to move around. So healthy lifestyle is the third thing. And I'll kind of illustrate the work we do by telling you one story. Um, this is David. David came to us about four years ago and he is kind of the poster child for open roads, right? So he came to us four years ago and he was kind of shy and awkward and he didn't really know a lot about bikes or people for that matter. And so he kind of came and he came up to program and he said, hey, my bike's broken and maybe we can fix it. And so we said, yeah, let's do that. And so he started coming week after week and he started to develop a relationship with our staff and our volunteers. And people really took a shine to David because he was so excited. He was a kid who was always at my front door like 20 minutes before program started, right? He was always knocking and said, hey, can we start? Are we ready? Can we start? And he would have like an old wrench in his pocket and his broken bike and he was all excited, right? So after a while, after a couple summers he did this, he was the person, the candidate for our apprenticeship, right? So we brought him to Zoo City Cycle, a shop in town, and he then was able to go through an interview with the owner, Rick, and um, a professional mechanic there, Craig. And so he went through that interview and he got this apprenticeship. So he had a short-term experience there and he really loved it. It really taught him a lot about what it's like to really be accountable, what it's like to work in a professional setting, what it's like to work with other people, real customers, real tools, and he loved it. And so David is kind of our poster child, our open road superstar. So you're probably wondering, is this all in Kalamazoo? Is it unique to Kalamazoo? And my first answer is yes. There is only one open roads and that's in Kalamazoo. But there are similar programs that mentor kids and teach skills around the country, right? So the first one is Bikes Not Bombs in Jamaica Plains, Massachusetts. Very successful, probably one of the oldest programs. The third one, I'm sorry, the second one is Bike Works in Seattle, Washington, because of course they have one of these in Seattle. They're super cutting edge, <laughs> right? Um, and then there's Blackstone Bike Works in Chicago, um, also a great program that um, helps with youth development. Uh, then there's Cycles of, Chains in San Cycles of Change in San Francisco and the Yellow Bike Project in Austin, right? So those five are similar programs and there are about 95 others around the country programs that mentor kids through bike mechanics. This is a photo um, of Dream Bikes in Madison, Wisconsin. That's Destiny and Moshe, who are two girls who work at that shop. Fantastic girls, I talked to them. Super excited to do the work they've been doing. They're about 15 and they help run that shop in Madison. So you're probably wondering where you come in, right? Where do I become a part of this revolution? And it 
is nothing without you, right? We can do our work and our programs, but we need people to make all of this work happen. So this revolution starts with you. We need volunteers. And even if you can't take apart your derailer, which I know not all of us are able to do, that's fine. You can be a role model, a supporter, someone who cheers kids on when they do something well. So we have a great group of volunteers in Kalamazoo and people who come to program religiously and help us do the work we do. Um, but we also need more. We need more people behind the scenes and in front of the scenes and near the bicycles and around the kids kind of helping the program work well. We also need partnerships. We need partnerships with the business community, with the education community, with the nonprofit community, partnerships that can help make us strong and vibrant and successful. That's a partnership we have with Western Michigan University. They um, helped us operate a class called Zen and the Art of Bicycle Maintenance in which we taught adults how to do bike mechanics. And that's a whole different bag. That's very exciting work. Adults are a little more complicated than kids, as you can imagine. <laughs> And we also need neighborhoods, right? Neighborhoods are where kids work and live and play and run around and fall down. So we need those neighborhoods to be our partners and to help us do this work successfully because we have to reach out and go to where kids are and where they live in order to do this work well. So if you fall into a state of despair, if you see kids on their YouTubes and their Google Skypes and get all you know, bummed out because they're not getting what they need, I would encourage you to do one thing, and that's take a deep breath, find a bicycle, and ride that. Hopefully someday you'll come to Open Roads. Thank you so much.